So the motion capture drawings evolved out of another set of drawings that I was making using um, pigment on paper and um, a very limited set of repeated actions in order to limit gesture and expressivity as much as I possibly could. So I was thinking about these other drawings as being a kind of you know, drawing degree zero. But even under these constrained circumstances, marks accumulated that I had no control over. Uh, human error and also kind of um, weird different kinds of behaviour of the material um, left a kind of trace. That was, that was the kind of purpose of the drawing and um, so that they became a kind of, um, kind of a, it became like an automatic drawing. I wondered whether I could uh, record myself while I was making the drawings um, so to capture more of the to try and capture some of the bodily movements and the gestures I was unconsciously making while busy with the task in hand. I found out about a motion capture touring studio that had recently become available at the University of Newcastle and um, they were interested in working with me and so up I went and I made one of my messy pigmenty drawings up in their, in their immaculate studio and we gathered uh, all this data a lot of data. And the guy I was working with, David Green, uh, who was incredibly generous and like me, quite ambitious for these drawings, we quickly realised we had, we had so much material and it was almost, it was a really big task trying to convert this data into what I wanted, which was line. Um, so I didn't want to make uh, an animation, three-dimensional animation or a three-dimensional object, even though what the data was, was, was a recording of coordinates in space. So we used algorithms to convert these these coordinates into something that could be read as line. And then I had to decide um, how to print the drawings. I always knew they were going to be inkjet prints. Um, I wanted the drawings to have a relationship not only to drawing um, but to photography. Um, and um, I should say here that I was quite influenced or um, inspired by the work of Edin Jules Marais, um, his black and white photographs of movement. I went for the white line on black. But the main thing that's interesting about this is that the inkjet printer just puts down the black ink here. There's no white line. The white line is just unprinted paper. And I think that absence of line, or kind of no line, that kind of hangs in this big black space works very well and corresponds, I think, to the, uh, the thing I'm kind of looking at, these movements, these involuntary gestures that we make while we're talking or any time when our minds are preoccupied with one thing and our body might be doing something else. Uh, you know, that signal something but don't really have, don't belong to the usual kind of um, categories of meaning, can't be reduced down to meaning at least.